Hello, my name is Maria de Souza. I'm the founder of Poster Queen, and this is a place to learn all things good posture and movements for um, a healthy body and mind and to live life with more elegance because I'm a woman and we ladies like to be elegant and feel elegant and without understanding good posture and always improving our posture elegance won't be as elegant as it can be <clears throat> so it's important that as much as cultivating creating good partial habits that we exercise as well to support our habits and all the exercise that I give you it's all to do is all to help you to bring realignment into the body bring more balance into the body and um, for the realignment of the pelvis the back the shoulders and to start um, getting rid of those habits that we have created as we went through life and that has given us a bad posture so with me you will have exercise that will help you to realign the body and as well as coming out of pain and today i'm going to give you another um, Feldman Kreis lesson that will help you with the realignment of the pelvis the rib basket the spine so for things like scoliosis and all kind of um, misalignments that you may have in your pelvis so this is a very good lesson for new moms for post natal because after you give birth um, it's likely that your pelvis because of all the movements of giving natural birth um, there might be misalignments and you might be a little bit in pain so this is a very good movement to do to realign the um, the pelvis for postnatal ladies as well it is as well a very good one for prenatal but um, provided that you can lie comfortably on your back because this lesson is all on the lie on the back so until that stage you can as well do that um, this lesson to um, bring more mobility and flexibility and elasticity to your pelvis the muscles in your pelvis to prepare you for birth okay but be aware how comfortable you are lying on your back okay so that's the only thing you need to be aware of so this is a, a short lesson and if you want to do a bigger lesson i have a um a similar lesson that is Feldenkrais lesson number five that is similar to this one and it addresses the same um, issues ailments um, but it's a little bit longer and is a very interesting lesson as well because um, or more interesting than this one because it has the different variations of um, the movement of the pelvis especially the last part where you go through different areas in the pelvis and it's, it's very it's kind of a magical lesson you feel um, the benefits straight away after you do that once um, and this one is a little bit shorter so I also wanted to tell you about my free mini course about the most common postural habits that most of the population have but most people have no idea that they have those um, uh, postural habits that are giving them bad posture and not looking so elegant not looking so good um, so I have five videos and those videos will those five videos, those five videos will change your posture forever and if it doesn't please come come back to me and tell me what it, that it didn't because um, I'll talk about the most common common habits that 
and every time I turn the head, I see in most people around, okay? So it's very important that you understand those habits, the habits that we will create as we go through life and we don't realize we have them and um, it's giving us bad posture, pain and uh, of course, not making making us look so good, whether you are a man or a woman, okay? Because elegance and gracefulness is for applies to men and women likewise, okay? So I'll put the link below for you to check out that course. So let's get on with this video, this lesson. You're going to lie um, on your back. And remember about your head. So when you lie on your back, the first thing that you need to um, check is your head. Is your head comfortable? Is your lie on with long legs? Uh, check your head, check your neck. Is it comfortable? or is your chin moving away from too far away from your chest and it doesn't feel so comfortable in that case you need a folded blanket i don't advise you use a cushion because cushions are too soft and you'll be um, digging in in a cushion and might not give the support that you need so you need something hard harder than a cushion so a folded blanket is ideal and you bring it under your head and then see how it feels for you if the chin comes a little bit closer to the chi, the chest and it feels a little bit more um, comfortable um, and as you do these lessons that um, the position of your head will um, will adjust, will get better because as you go through these lessons, your spine, your pelvis will um, realign and that will change the position of your head. Okay, um, so you need to know as well the height, how many times you need to fold the blanket. You don't want to fold it too many times and to be too high, and then your chin is too close to the chest and isn't comfortable either okay so you need to find for yourself what's the balance what's the center for you um i don't usually need um anything under my head so i'm not going to use it but you need to find out for yourself okay so i was just going to sp spend a moment here lying on the back Ooh. Just take a moment to arrive to your space, to your mat, to the floor. It's just not as hard as it feels to lie on the back today. Is it comfortable? Is it not so comfortable? And if it isn't comfortable, where do you feel the discomfort? And really connect to those parts that feel um, um, discomfort. In other words, connect to those parts of yourself that are calling for your attention and really connect to those parts as a part as opposed to um, neglect them or ignore them because that's not the way that we can address the problem we need to address the problem by looking at it with detail and here the same thing your body the same thing so treat those parts of yourself that are calling for your attention like a baby. Really connect to, to it and be there and maybe they will tell you why they are in discomfort. Maybe not. It's important that you acknowledge those parts of yourself. And then start paying attention to how much of yourself is in contact with the floor. Start from your heels. Notice that pressure that you feel. Uh, the heels in contact with the floor. Is it the same in the right and the left side or is it different? And as we go through this kind of body scan, which I don't really like to call it that way, but it's, it's easier to understand. As we go through these elements, 
um, you will find a difference. It's very likely that you find a difference between your left and the right side, okay, and vice versa. And that is because we all have mis um, misalignments and imbalances in the body. So it's very it's natural that you'll find those imbalances in yourself. Don't worry about them. There's nothing. Uh, don't try to fix or correct or to do anything about. It. Just notice them. And as you go through these lessons, things will become a little bit more balanced for you. So notice your heels, the calves, in contact with the floor, the thighs. How much of your sides are in contact with the floor and is it more the sides or the outside, the insides? The middle just notice what's for you uh, notice if there is a gap behind your knees maybe there is maybe there isn't and then ever since for your pelvis and the buttocks in contact to the floor again is there a difference between the right and the left sides? Maybe one side feels more in contact with the floor, or maybe um, it feels larger, heavier, whatever. Um, the images, the um, words that come to you, doesn't matter, just sense those differences. And then move up to your back, the lower back, the shoulder blades. Can you sense both shoulder blades in contact to the floor? Does the right feel different to the left? Is there a gap in your lower back? If there is, it's normal. Or do you feel that your lower back is in contact to the floor? So the lower back has a deep curve on it. It, dif it differs from person to person. Some people have got a deeper um, inward gap um, curve than others. Um, so we are all different. See what's there for you. But what I wanted to say is that if there is a space, it's normal. And um, if your back, lower back touch the, the, the floor, then that's what it is as well, okay? <clears throat> Just notice what's there for you. And then notice your head, the contact of your head on the floor, the pressure that you feel on the head and the floor. Notice if it is where it is. Is it more to the sides, more up, more down in the center? Do you feel that your head tilts ever so slightly more to one side than the other? Can you sense the line from the neck through the spine all the way down? Can you sense that relationship between your head and the spine? Or that is not clear to you? Just notice that. And just turn the head ever so gently, slowly and gently, the slower you go, the more you can feel. To the right a couple of times, just sense the quality of that movement, so it's not about how far you can go, but it's about finding out, noticing the quality of the movement of the neck. How does it feel? And can you feel the spine as well, or can you feel only the neck? As you turn slowly to one side, how, how does it feel, the turn? And then you turn to the other side, and notice how that feels going to the other side, compare both sides, is it easier to turn to one side than the other, is it different? Okay, and then bring the head in the middle. 
and keep a few mental memories of all these things that you found out for yourself so that at the very end we come back here and see if things may feel different for you okay so now we're going to bring your feet on the floor and you do that by bending one knee at a time bend the knee to the side slide the foot towards your buttocks and then when the foot doesn't go anymore any closer to your buttocks you bring the knee up and then you bend down the leg, slide the foot towards your buttocks and then bring the knee up and then find a good place for your feet so you want the feet and they need to be hip distance apart at least same distance between the feet and the legs the knees and you want your heels to be more or less below your knee joints okay but you might need a different arrangement see what's easy for you and comfortable for you okay if you can't sense then you can always look but it's better that you de develop um, the awareness of sensing as opposed to um, look if you want to look just hold your head with your hands and then look and see if you can't sense very much but try to develop that sense the sense of feeling it without looking okay so now that you have the feet on the floor and before that just press the foot on the floor and and just make sure that as you press the foot the whole of the sole is in contact with the floor so you don't including the toes you don't want to feel more your heels or the balls of the feet you know, the whole of the foot um, needs to be is best to be in contact with the floor okay and something that I go on and on about is very important is that make sure you're not wearing tight socks that are squeezing your toes. The toes need to be free to participate in these movements. And that applies to any work um, out you do, any exercise you do. So here we're going to rock the pelvis back and forth or up and down. Robert whatever it's easy for you to understand so as we rock move the pelvis one way we're going to press the lower back onto the floor so I'm moving the pelvis back and the lower back presses onto the floor gently and as I move the pelvis forward I you will um, arch the lower back exaggerate the arch of the lower back only going as far as it is comfortable without forcing um, and pushing anything okay and you're going to carry on with these two movements of the pelvis rocking back and forth one way you pressing the lower back onto the floor and the other way you are arching the lower back is exaggerating that curve in your lower back, okay? And just carry on with these two movements. So um, notice your feet helping you with the movement in the pelvis. So bring your awareness to the area in the pelvis. And you're going to make the pelvis rock back and forth with the help of the feet. Breathing in and out, making the movement gentle, noticing how it feels to move one way and the other way is the easy one way than the other. And I want you to be really present in yourself. So there's a lot of um, things for you to keep your mind occupied to keep your mind present in um, this moment so um, see if you can stay present as much as you can and of course your mind is going to take you away from this moment and and when you catch yourself in thought land so thought land all you have to do is to acknowledge that and then bring your mind back time and time again back to your body back to feeling and sensing
And as you move the pelvis back and forth, I want you to start paying attention to your rib basket. Not just the movement in your rib basket. How does it, does it feel that movement in your rib basket? Remember that you have a rib basket and not a rib cage. Because the word cage brings that sense of being rigid and of um, a hard, hard structure and that's not the reality because the ribs are just like a basket and they give. So the ribs are designed to move and to help the movement of the spine, the arms, the pelvis and when that movement doesn't exist in the ribs then it makes a, a, everything a little bit more difficult to move and might also cause injuries because you're not moving the torso as we need to. So the rib basket is not only to protect and to case the internal organs, it's to also participate in all the movements we do with the pelvis, with the arms, with the head, with the spine. So it's important that our rib, ribs are mobile enough to support the other movements. I have a series of, I think there are five videos on this subject and the series are called You Don't Have a Rib Cage. So if you want to bring more mobility into the ribs, area please watch those videos and i want you to pay attention to the movement of the ribs and also just sense the movement traveling from the pelvis throughout your spine to your neck and notice your head moving can you feel that your chin comes towards the chest as you arch the lower back and moves away from the chest as you press the lower back onto the floor and it might not be a big movement it doesn't matter how um, what's the movement as long as you can feel that the head is somehow moving and if for some reason you don't feel your head moving then all you have to do is to create an invitation for the head to move with the pelvis sometimes we're just fixing the head unconsciously and we're not allowing the head to move so see if that is your case and then see if the head starts moving without making the head move so i don't i don't want you to make your head move i just want you to bring an intention maybe you can visualize the head moving with the pelvis up and down and then see if the movement starts to come to into reality so creating an intention doesn't matter how big the movement is in your head all that matters is that you feel the head communicating with the pelvis. Breathing in and out, whatever you do, make sure you're not holding your breath. Making the movement as smoother as you can graceful and if it's not so graceful or so smooth to see if you can find ways to make the movement smooth maybe you need to go a bit slower pay more attention to the other parts of yourself that need to move
Okay, and then you're going to bring this to a close. Stay where you are for the sake of keeping this video shorter. I'm not going to give you so much breaks. If you need, please take a break. Break, lengthen your legs and stay in your back for um, a moment. We're going to move to the other movement, which is rocking the pelvis from side to side like a boat. Okay, so what you do, you press one foot at a time onto the floor and the knees will stay as quiet as possible in the middle, but you um, allow the knee to move away from the pelvis. So start pressing the foot on the floor. The, say we start with the right foot. Start pressing the right foot on the floor and notice what happened. Can you sense that as you press the foot, that side of the pelvis wants to lift and your knee wants to move away from the pelvis ever so slightly. So this is the movement we want to create here. So press the right foot on the floor and lift that side of the pelvis away from the floor and the knee moves away from the knee from the pelvis but the knee doesn't swing from left to right it just moves away in a straight line away from the pelvis the other side of the pelvis is grounded so it can't be a big movement it can't be a big lift it's just an inch or so from the floor and then break it down and then you do the same thing on the other side press the left foot on the floor and allow the pelvis to lift away from the floor an inch or so from the floor the knee will move away from the pelvis and you kind of turn rock to the opposite side and then bring it down and then carry on with this movement it's like you're walking with the pelvis from side to side pressing each foot at a time allowing the movement to travel from your feet towards your legs to your pelvis and then turning you to the side ever so slightly as if you wanted to come and roll onto your belly which is not of course what you're going to do here it's just that, that sensation to roll um, to the side Breathing in and out, and it does feel like walking with the pelvis from side to side. And also now, notice the difference between one side and the other. It's very likely that you feel the difference. Maybe one side is easier to do than the other, or the movement is clear. Remember to start the movement from your feet. So the foot first presses and then you allow the pelvis to lift and as one side of the pelvis is in the air the other is grounded and that's why you can't lift very high because your shoulder blades are as well grounded both of the shoulder blades are in contact with the floor but you feel the weight shift from shoulder blade to shoulder blade but you're not lifting the shoulder blades away from the floor let them be grounded Notice the movement traveling again from your pelvis through your spine to your neck and notice what's doing, what your head is doing, what's happening with the head. Again, it's very common that um, people unconsciously, unconsciously fix the head and the head can't move. So see if you're doing that as well. And allow your head to go with the pelvis. Again, you're not making the head to move we're just allowing the pelvis to the head to react to the movement of the pelvis so see if you can feel your head moving with the pelvis to the side ever so slightly again it can't be a big movement sometimes i'm doing this class this lesson in class and i don't see heads moving and i ask and most people just say that they feel the head move anyway although i don't see it and that's 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 all you need if you feel the head nicely going with the pelvis that's what you need so it doesn't need to be a big movement in the head it can't be a big movement in the head sometimes i see people in class to um with um, 
where the head moves quite a lot and then when I inquire and uh, bring awareness to it, so you can see that um, they are making the head to move themselves, so they're not allowing the movement to happen naturally. And then that's not what you want. We want to allow the movement to happen naturally, organically, without making the head to move. You're only making the pelvis move, nothing else. Everything else that moves is a reaction of the pelvis moving. So you want that nice communication going on between the pelvis and the head. So rocking from side to side. It is like you're sticking your bum to the side. The knees are in the middle, they don't swing, but they move away ever so slightly from the pelvis. Breathe in and out. See if you can bring a sense of enjoyment, satisfaction to this movement. Make, it, make sure you're relaxing everywhere, everywhere your hand. Sometimes we tension unnecessarily, so check yourself now and then. Check your arms, check your, your hands and fingers, check um, your ribs. Maybe you, you um, and unconsciously tensioning somewhere in your upper body. Just notice that and let the movement happen naturally. It should be quite a satisfying movement after you've done a few times and your nervous system really gets it. It should be very satisfying movement to do. Remember that the movement starts on the feet. First, press the foot and allow the movement to travel to your pelvis, from your pelvis through your spine to your head. The shoulder blades are grounded. Notice the differences between one side and the other. Not only in the pelvis, but maybe you feel a difference uh, in your ribs as well. Maybe you feel a difference in the roll of your head as well. So really pay attention, being curious to what's going on, how your body is reacting to this movement. And each time you may feel that you can lift a little bit higher, although the aim here is not to lift high, but um, make the movement easier. And when the movement is easier and fluid, more fluid, maybe you can feel that the, the pelvis wants to go higher. Slowly going up and slowly coming back. So the, the same quality of the movement going up um, is coming down. So it's as important to go up, to lift the pelvis as much as it, as it is coming down onto the floor. And I just noticed that I was fixing my head for some reason. So see if that is happening with you. Just allow the head to move naturally with the movement of the pelvis. Okay, and then you bring this to a close. Stay here. Sense yourself, sense your pelvis, your ribs, your shoulder blades. And now we're going to take the pelvis around in a circle, full circle. In my other video, the lesson number five, 
you have a different variation of the movement in the pelvis going around in a circle. So have a look at that because it's a very interesting variation and you feel much more and you'll spend much more time in the pelvis area. But this lesson is shorter. So, but as beneficial as the other one. Um, so imagine that you have a clock sitting on top of your pelvis in, in your lower belly and as you look down as you look down you can see 12 o'clock towards your head and um, six o'clock towards your feet and then you have three four and then you have nine o'clock to your right and three o'clock to your left okay and what you're going to do you're going to take start with whatever direction comes natural to you whether that is uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise, it doesn't matter. And what you want to do is to take the pelvis around in a full circle. And if this movement doesn't come natural to you because maybe um, you haven't done before, so don't worry about it, just do what you can do to bring the pelvis around in a circle full circle visualizing every single hour in your clock and as you go through each hour just notice what hours feel more clear what hours you feel that are a bit more tender what hours are a bit more smoother just notice the movement as you go around in a full circle. Notice your feet helping with the movement, helping you to make the movement, helping you to move the pelvis. Breathe in and out. And then I want you to start noticing other movements in your ribs, ribs in your rib basket, up the spine, and then your head. Notice if your head is accompanying the movement of the pelvis. And again, don't make the head move, just allow the head to be pulled gently with by the pelvis. Notice if your head goes around with the pelvis, keeping your knees as quiet as possible. So that you really differentiate the movement in the pelvis. See if you can make the movement smooth, graceful, and if it isn't, then see if you can find ways to make it smooth and graceful and the more you do it the more the more familiar and natural this movement will become come to you okay and then you're going to go the other way around the clock so if you are going clockwise now go anti-clockwise or vice versa whatever you we're doing before, just go the other way around. And if this the other way around feels a little bit more um, awkward or less familiar. Stay there, stay here a little bit longer so that you bring balance into um, the pelvis. Again, go through every single hour, notice what you feel, what's there for 
you do you find across do you come across the same areas um, of tension that you felt before or um, are you finding new areas and what was smooth before is it smooth now going this way around or does it feel different And see if you can bring a sense of joy, enjoyment into this movement. You just notice as you go through your day, notice um, how things may change for you. As you do, um, you practice regularly these classes. Okay, and then you're going to let this go, and then you're going to lengthen your legs, bring the knee, one knee towards the floor at the time, and then slide the foot away, and then the other knee drops to the floor, and slide the foot away, and just stay here for a moment, just feel yourself. Lie on your back once again, and bring back those memories from the very beginning of this lesson, and just notice how things feel here compared to the very beginning. If you have parts of, of yourself that weren't so comfortable, how do they feel now? Are they still there? Are they gone? Do you feel that there's more of yourself in contact with the floor? Do you feel more, a better sense for your shoulder blades in contact with the floor, your pelvis? Not as you right side and the left side, see if there is any differences comparing to the very beginning. And then very slowly and gently roll your head a couple of times to one side, notice the quality of that movement comparing to the very beginning of the, the lesson, and then roll to the other side, notice if anything feels different. Good, and then you can stay lying here on the floor for as long as you want. But I'm going to finish this here. Um, thank you very much for doing this lesson with me. Thank you very much for being part of my community. I don't take for that for granted. I appreciate you very much. If you have comments, requests, please put them below and I'll look into it. Remember my free mini course with five videos where I show you all the um, all these common, very common postural habits that we create, and we don't even realize that we have them, um, and that are giving us bad posture and not looking so good. So have a look at that. Um, and um, if you want to receive more tips. And if you are not on my mailing list, I leave a link below for you to join my mailing list. Next week I'm going every Thursday, most Thursday, Thursday I send out something, a tip or review, um, all about good posture. Next week I'm going to talk about uh, flip-flops. So flip-flops, we are in the summer. Um, at the time I am recording this video, it's summer and flip-flops are um, a big thing, so we will, will we all wear flip-flops, but we need to be very aware of the um, side effects of wearing flip-flops. So um, that have to do with the, um, the posh, our posture, and if you want to have a, receive that uh, that um, blog post, the email, and sign up to my newsletter below, and you will receive that in your inbox. Um, and that's it really for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye bye now.